23-year-old Myra Hinley and 27-year-old Ian Brady were charged with the murders of Edward Evans, Leslie Ann Downey and John Kilbride. Months earlier, they would have faced the hangman's noose, but the fact that this was the first murder trial since the abolition of the death penalty fueled the public hatred. David and Maureen Smith went from being part of the couple's inner circle to becoming star witnesses for the prosecution. The extraordinary atmosphere that surrounded the case came through in Mara Hindley's letters and in her unpublished autobiography. She was very aware of that. She described how they could hear waves of sound coming down the corridor. It shocked the nation, really, and it shocked people that what had happened and how it happened and the numbers involved and also the families involved, you know. We then had television and it was almost brought into people's sitting rooms and it was there in front of you and so it, it, it didn't go away. The trial at Chester Assizes was sort of the final scene, the final act, but rather like first night, in a sense of, a sense of expectation. How is it going to play? The whole thing had placed her on a high in the sense of, you know, she was no longer walking on the real world, you know. Here she was, the centre of worldwide attention for these dreadful crimes. It hadn't yet dawned on her that she was now to face life imprisonment, separated from the man she'd loved, and to be the most reviled and hated prisoner in Britain. And yet what's striking is that in the face of this, her bond with Ian was completely unbreakable. She was still in this world with him and wouldn't let go. They were like two musketeers. They were one for all and all for one. They were all together. They were together in a partnership and they stopped by that. And if you kick one, the other would limp. They lived in each other's world and they lived together. And they lived for each other. Some people might say Myra didn't react to anything at first because she was in shock. Probably the shock of getting caught. But I think the fact that she remained totally cold throughout the trial spoke volumes about her character. The thing which lives with me most of all is watching these two in the trials, sitting there, completely expressionless. They just didn't move for days on end, you see. Them. The faces, no sign of emotion. Not even a wet eye, not even, if you like, even a, a tear of regret. Um, or a tear of fear. You are hypnotised in a peculiar sort of way by them, by the lack of reaction, by their behaviour. You say, well, isn't this not having any impact on you at all? She had this ability to switch on. Like, she had the ability to switch off when she was being questioned. She had the ability to switch off when she had the tapes of Leslie Ann Downey. Hindley's fate was finally sealed when the prosecution's key piece of evidence was played to a packed court number two at Chester Assizes. Forty-two years on, those who heard little Leslie Ann Downey being tortured and pleading for her life remember every second of that tape. Incidentally, that same recording that brought about Hindley's downfall is now locked in a secret vault. It is deemed to be too disturbing for the public to hear. We'd been briefly prepared for it. But when it came, you know, it shot. It was gut-wrenching stuff. And you hear that kid screaming for her life, pleading. You could see these people around the court, members of the jury. You could see the people, the tears coming to people's eyes. And you looked at these two and said, no emotion on their face as it was played. No emotion. Well, you aren't really human. Go on, react, react, do something. Show some emotion so we can basically record it and show that you have some humanity. But it wasn't there. Not at all. Once that tape was played, one couldn't sink lower so far as horrendous crimes are concerned. And once the jury and the court had heard that, I mean, so far as the world was concerned and the victims' families especially, there was no coming back. When the jury came back and gave the verdict, I mean, there was more expression of relief from the police than there was any expression of despair from them. I don't think there was any expression at all from them. The verdict was no surprise. Their reaction was no surprise. The sentence was delivered. No reaction from them. No words. And take him down, take him away, and then they went out of public gaze. On the 6th of May 1966, 
Judge Justice Fenton Atkinson sentenced the Moore's murderers to life imprisonment. Myra Hindley was 23 years old. It would be the last time Brage and Hindley would ever see each other. For Hindley, life really did mean life. She would die behind bars 36 years later.